caught him, he's gone. Truly no more than a loosener. But it must be said of Jonathan Lewis that he hardly had his eye in. Well, first strike, and is he delighted? Ball that swung away, maybe a bit wide. And Goff salutes the crowd and they him. Well, that's what he's there for, England captain Mike Allerton on his way back. A rueful look at the scoreboard, which says eight for one. A good line from Darren Goff, just a fraction wide. Mike Allerton pushing out at it. Just a question of a, a really minor error of judgment, but it's enough. And it was a good catch, too. Richard Blakey, the man behind the stumps. That looked a quick delivery too. Bye so bye. Richard Blakey has the catch, Darren Goff has the wicket. Mike Ellerton gone for five, and Lancashire having won the toss. Eight for one. Off responded to the disappointment of being dropped by England with five in Surrey's innings and an indication that this was to be his most productive season for Yorkshire. A 221 runs sent Yorkshire to the top of the championship for the first time since July 1987. Dover, it's two for no wicket, and Goff bowls to Atherton. Caught by Bosch. Brilliantly done, that's well bowled by Darren Goff. First wicket for Yorkshire, and uh, they're very much in the ascendancy this morning. It was nicely taken by Bias. Atherton goes, and Goff has his first scalp. A very, very important one. Yeah, no better way to make the England selectors take notice than to bowl out the England captain cheaply. Beautiful delivery that held its line. Michael Atherton goes for naught. Got him. Darren Goff has done it. He's bowled very well today. Good performance. He's done very well. I'm sure that will have been noticed by Mike Lafferton, England captain, who he got out earlier. And I wouldn't be surprised if uh, one or two of the England selectors are watching this match. Beautiful off spinner. Deceived the batsman. And it was just played neatly back for a simple catch. Excellent ball made early strikes after Warwickshire won the toss and elected to bat. On a flat wicket, Yorkshire needed a sizeable first innings lead to put Warwickshire under pressure. That didn't appear likely as Darren Goff strode to the crease with Yorkshire six down and just three ahead of Warwickshire's total. Once again, the last two wickets made a telling contribution. Out there, I want to perform and I want to score quickly. That's, that's my, main, uh, my main aim to my, to my cricket. And um, yeah, It seems to be happening this year. I've got, I think I've got 500 runs now. Uh, I've, it's more than I've ever scored before, so I hopefully keep going. It was a good knock. He, he played very sensibly, but he can do that. That's the uh, the great thing about it is he doesn't have to go out there all the time and play on one leg, doing a pirouette in the crease and all this stuff. You know, if he goes out there and plays proper cricket, as he can do, then he will get those results. When Silverwood fell with the score on 418, Goff still needed 40 for 100. Richard Stemp provided the necessary support. In the to get it, it was a great achievement for me because people said I should be getting them and, and to get it, especially against the county champions, Warwickshire, who will we'll never give in the fight all the way. And against Pollock, who got me out in the winter in South Africa, I was, I was very pleased. Yorkshire's last two wickets had put on 150 and it turned the match. The first half of the season was drawing to a close and Yorkshire were firmly on course for the championship. 61 in arrears on first innings, Hampshire were soon deep in trouble on the third day. For Yorkshire, Chris Silverwood was the pick of the bowlers, with three for 45. Bowled him off the inside edge. Darren Goff deserved that. And that's the end of Greenfield for 10, and 130 for 4. He's bowled some really good balls, particularly this morning with the new one. This one didn't move a lot, just to the inside edge, uh, Keith Greenfield trying to force it away because uh, he knows that Sussex need to just push on with that scoring rate a little bit. He's got him, 
Well, Whitehead has turned two or three of those down because of the uh, amount of swing. And Alan Whitehead has decided this time he got him, and that really is a big blow for Yorkshire. It is indeed. It's a big blow for Sussex. He's a good player, Alan Wells. Just the in-swinger hit him before he got the bat there and never really got the foot forward. Didn't get out of the block all much with his front foot stride. Oh, goodness me. Oh, what a super catch that is. Tony McGrath got in all sorts of a tangle and managed to retain his sense of calm and hold on to uh, an excellent catch. Again, Warren's given himself room and flayed it just, just at point and Anthony McGrath has pulled off another good catch. Huge applause here from the uh, enormous Old Trafford crowd for Warren Hegg. But applause too for McGrath for that performance. Hegg has gone for 35, it's 289 for 7. It's explosive from Goff. And it's 6 over extra cover. Fantastic blow. <laughs> Have a look at the follow through here. If you want to see somebody try to give it uh, everything, <laughs> you, you just have. <laughs> a wonderful shot. He won to enhance his winter tour prospects. Darren Goff took eight wickets in the match as Lancashire were forced to follow on after Yorkshire had piled on 529 for eight declared. Had defeated Nottinghamshire, the title would have been theirs. But so it's got him. Darren Goff's got the wicket. Marcus Scopic is gone. That is a big, big blow for Yorkshire. Name in the man at cover. Strange shot. He almost stopped on it, Bram. Yes, he um, had a close look at the wicket uh, when he was departing. There you see, just scooping the ball in the air. The ball didn't seem to stop anywhere but he just couldn't keep it down. Maybe a little bit of change in pace from Darren Goff. But an extremely important wicket. Marcus Trescotti goes for 12 in Somerset, 23 for one. Edged, gone this time, caught at first slip. Rudolph makes no mistake, Goff Stand gets up. his reward and how well he's bowled for two and a half overs. Gets his first wicket and Sutcliffe's Tortured innings is over. Yeah, the uh, Yorkshire boys are very happy there. Jacques Rudolph taking a fairly comfortable catch. Just cutting across his body. And uh, he survived for a while. But uh, that one just too good for him. So Sutcliffe gone for 16 from 36 balls. Lancashire in deep. Oh, I think that's gloved and down the leg side. It's a great catch by by Brophy behind the stumps and Duplessis could do very little about that it was a brute of a ball that has flown taking the glove and has been snapped up by Brophy yeah Brophy's been keeping really well this season another one here down the leg ball comes back sharply and Duplessis definitely gets the glove and one-handed diving to his left and happy days for Yorkshire Certainly are not so for Francois Duplessis. Gone for nine, 44 for five, Lancashire. Close. Going down, not going down. Nick Cook says that's out. Darren Goff gets his third wicket. The end is very nearly here for Lancashire. They're 58 for eight. Mahmoud is out for naught. He's got his third wicket here, Darren. It's just in the back a little bit. It might have gone down or might have just hit leg stump. You know, sometimes the bowlers don't get given leg stump. This time, he rules in favor of the bowler. He's not going to moan about that. Fortunately for Sag, he's out for a naught. 58 for eight now. The procession continues for Lancashire. Gone wicket. Now Duplessis is gone. He follows Stephen Croft to the pavilion or the dugout. 
delight on all the Yorkshire faces. That's a crucial blow. Certainly is. Yorkshire's bowlers strangling the life out of Lancashire here. Duplessis with 42 from 38 really had to, uh, to go on and try and win this game from here. Couldn't get it over mid-wicket. Frustration in the middle, frustration in the dugout. Lancashire have got a real task on their hands here. Darren Goff with the bat that did them on Wednesday. Might be Darren Goff with the ball that's going to do them here. Duplessis gone for 42. Lancashire 94 for 5. Ball board in the railway station. Bowled him! Goff comes back. What a game we've got. Lancashire still needs 16 from 9. Great reply from Goff. He's gone for two sixes and then cleans him up. It's as good as it gets from Darren Goff. What a comeback. As Kyle Hogg was looking to get this away down to fine leg. Look at the Yorker. Spear in. Little bit of swing. Puff of dust and middle stump is back. As Kyle Hogg misses by playing across the line. But a great little knock from him. 22 off just nine balls. Lancashire 120 for six. They're still in with a shout. Well, it's not going to be the best of innings, this, from Andre Adams. Been at the crease for six balls and hasn't got off the mark. Holding out to extra cover. So Adams out for naught, 117 to seven. Out thought, out witted. Slow ball again, just chips it up. Adams looks out of sorts, really. Six balls he's faced, no runs he's got. And Yorkshire continue to do what they've done, really, picking up wickets at regular intervals. So dangerous players such as Adams falling. He goes for naught knots now, 117 for seven.